welcome friends to In the Kitchen with Alice. This is a beautiful day in Florida, and I would like to share with you the things that people have been bringing to me recently. People in my ongoing 12-week workshop have been sharing that they have cravings for sweetness and cravings for something oily and fatty and delicious and cravings for something salty, something that has a little bit of a bite, something that's spicy. So these are the things I want to address today. Today, I want to show you how in just a few moments, you go to the store, you go to the farm, you go to the farmer's market, the wholesaler in your area, and you pick up some very simple ingredients and you make sure they're stocked in your refrigerator. And when it comes time for you to make something that's very, very simple, and that will hit the spot just right for you. This is really the subject matter of today's presentation. So I want to begin with something very, very colorful. This is a banana strawberry date smoothie. And when you put these beautiful things that are full of carbohydrates, full of color, full of the live enzymes of the fresh fruit, into a blender with a little bit of water. In just a few moments, you have something so creamy and delicious, you won't believe it. So here we have our delicious strawberries, our bananas, and here down below, we have our dates. Let's pick this up here, show you. These are dates. Now in the beautiful medjool date, we have the most extraordinary taste, flavor, and consistency. This date has so many purposes in raw food preparations, maybe some cooked dishes. This date can be opened up with a knife very, very simply, and you want to remove its simple date seed. Mm -hmm. And then you can throw it in your blender. So let's go ahead and prepare this drink. I have already put in the bananas and strawberries, and now we've just added the date. So we peel the date apart, and we pry out the seed, and then we put the date into the blender. Mm -hmm. There we go, we open the date again. Dates are delicious. A good test for what dates are really like on the taste buds is to slice off a piece like this for one of your friends. Have them close their eyes and have them taste it. And you can say, does it taste somewhat chocolatey? And they'll, they'll wonder because it has such delicious desserty taste. It gives a lot of sweetness and it has a lot of carbohydrate, a lot of uh, calories in the date. And when you're eating fresh food, you don't want to diminish your calories. You want to expand them. You want to have a thousand calorie meal would be wonderful. And your dates are adding those things to your food, and giving you a wonderful uh, amount of strength and energy for your day. So now I'm going to add in some lovely water to make the drink for us. And put it in a blender, and put it on the top. And in just a few short moments, you have exactly what you need for a delicious, beautiful meal. This could be a breakfast, this could be a late afternoon um, dish for you, or this could be an evening special. And the more bananas, the creamier it would be. So if we put in more bananas than we did today, we only put in a couple. If we put in more bananas, this would turn into a goopy, lovely ice cream drink. So this is a delicious drink, full of punch and vigor for life. <laughs> 
So let's see here. I think what I will do. Put this aside. Put our drink into some containers for some friends. And we can start over. Okay, I have another drink to show you. And that begins with the orange. The orange is very, very easy to peel. You can use a simple knife and cut the peel right off. Okay. And then you can put it through the juicer and make a delicious juice. Let's put this aside for the moment so you can see the juicer here. And you put these inside the juicer. I'll turn that on in a moment. Let's peel another orange for you to see that in just a few moments, you can make your own fresh orange juice. Any juices that are done at the store have been slightly pasteurized, which means they've been cooked. When you peel the fresh orange, you can see that it is quite vibrant. I'm smelling the orange very, very much right now, peeling this. The lovely oils of the orange are in the peel. It gives off a lovely aroma. Once the flower on the orange tree blossoms, out of that comes the beautiful orange fruit. And when you peel the peel, you now expose the fruit to going through its process of breaking down. And that process is what we call um, basically the decaying process. So up until the flower and then the fruit of the plant comes and then we're given over the fruit to eat. The skin is protecting the fruit from going downhill more quickly. This color attracts us from the tree. It's telling us, I have something wonderful to give you. When you peel this from, from the orange, you're now ready to open it up and with your chewing to start to break down and take in the enzymes and the wonderful sugars that are there to heal all of our conditions to do with blood sugar. These sugars are made for us from the sun. So let us make our beautiful drink. I go back here to the freezer. Here, I have a wonderful piece of uh, pineapple that I have frozen. And what I'm going to do is simply cut that in half. Actually, I, I have my knife here. Let me get out my knife. Cutting that in half, we'll just put it through the blender. Fresh orange juice. And now, as one of my subscribers to this uh, broadcast has asked about, we are going to add some of the pulp right back in. And you ask yourself, well, why did you put it through a juicer in the first place? The juice is coming out fresh from the juicer. And then after that, we have the pulp, but in its broken down form, because the juicer has put it through a process. So with that process, we've thickened our smoothie, but we've got it down into a manageable size. The juicer is much better at that than the blender. So we make up our drink here. So we asked the question, what is in our juice here? We put pineapple juice, but not the pineapple pulp. And we put the orange juice and the orange pulp. So now we've made ourselves a delicious, beautiful, tasty smoothie. And we are going to add this delicious frozen pulp inside this drink. The taste that is given to the drink is like having um, some ice cream put in your fresh orange juice. It is absolutely delicious. And we can take a twig from our mint and place that here. Okay, 
So here we have some delicious drinks that can be made very, very quickly. How long did those drinks take me? Very little time. The only thing we have to remember, we need to go to the farm, we need to gather the beautiful produce, we need to store our refrigerated produce, and then we have to bring it out. When we have those cravings for a lot of sugar, we, we feel we're dragging a bit, we don't have enough energy, we're looking for those drinks that will give us that energy and bring that spark to life back. And this is what's in the fruits for us. Okay. Another thing one can do is simply open a beautiful, in this case, this is a, a watermelon from an organic farm. You can see the beautiful red. This watermelon is a wonderful way to uh, end an evening or begin a day. You can put it in your bowl take out your spoon and just begin. <laughs> so this is a wonderful way to have a treat that will give you immediate blood sugar, give you that vitality that is in the live fruit, not a juice that's been pasteurized, and this will give you the vitality you're looking for as well. This is also full of water. We are being dehydrated by the foods we eat in America. So every cooked food and every dried food and every crispy, oily, salty dried food particularly is taking all the water out of the inside of the body and requiring it in the creation of the bowel. So when you have something dry that's going into your body, in order for that nutrition to get to the bloodstream through the small intestine, we need water. So when you eat fruits and vegetables that are full of water and especially the fruits, you are giving your body the water it needs. Okay. Now, let's see what else we have to offer. I wanted to give you the idea that it would be very, very simple to make up a bowl of something that most people might not be attracted to just having an apple. So I thought I would give you the idea that with an apple, you could just cut up a few pieces of an apple and make it quite delicious in a bowl. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Let's put the chili peppers aside for a moment. You can place your beautiful apples that you've cut on a plate, mm -hmm. just like this. Yeah. And then place the plate there. Cut open a lemon and simply sprinkle your delicious sweet apples with some lemon. And if you have some honey, or if you're eating something a little different than just a fresh honey for your sweetener, perhaps a brown rice syrup, you can take it and pour it in a small drizzle right over your delicious apples. And this makes a very, very tasty dish. Um, you can add anything to this. If you chop them smaller, you could add mangoes, pieces of mango with your apple or pear or peaches. And you add a little bit of lemon, gives it a zest and a little sweetness. You can even grind up some nuts and sprinkle the top with um, the lovely bitter of nuts and the crunchy of nuts. Make a lovely little dish. For those of you who are craving the fat, the warmth, the wonderful quality of fat in the human body, I wanted to say that it is very, very simple to simply stab the inside a portion of the avocado and get the seed out. Let's step, step it. Mm -hmm. And then you can use your spoon and simply dip in. Sometimes just a little bit of that fat and the nutritiousness that's in the avocado is all that you're really looking for. You can always put a little something with the avocado if you like. Some pumpkin seeds are delicious. You can put the avocado into a bowl with some mangoes, make it more of a sweet dish. But avocado gives us this lovely quality of fat that we are all very much craving. So we go buy potato chips, or we go buy something that's heavy in fat. And the truth is the plant-based fats are gonna transform your whole insides and really give you the support and the sustainability that fat is in our diet. Fat is helpful to our brains and our bloodstream and everything that works in the body. I wanted to show you that a very simple, um, tasty snack could be a snack or a meal, however you wish to make it. 
but it's very, very simple. All you have to do is cut into your avocado and poke the seed out and the seed can be planted and then just dip in and have your avocado. And you could add seeds to it, put it in a bowl and toss it with a few other ingredients. Okay. As far as nuts and seeds, I brought my wonderful uh, pumpkin seeds because this will take me a long time to eat all these pumpkin seeds myself. So I brought them again today. And I just wanna say that with the nuts and seeds, Sometimes we're craving something that goes with the nuts and seeds to give out that little bit of uh, a little punch to them. So what you can do is simply, let's see here, um, put your nuts and seeds into a bowl, yeah, bigger bowl, and now add things to this to make it a little more flavorful. You can add your seeds and nuts to other dishes. Uh, grain salads and salads, regular green salads. But you could also simply add a little flavoring to your nuts and seeds and you have a wonderful, tasty, fatty, and even a little salty dish. For those who are not using salt in other forms and only from plant foods, I will be doing a whole presentation on dressings and sauces and sprays for seeds and nuts for a tasty trail mix. Uh, that are based on the salt that comes simply from the plant foods uh, directly. Uh, for example, celery has sodium. So I will be making some wonderful dressings where you don't add any oil and you don't add anything that has saltiness to it from um, a process. So let me just reach over here to show you um, a few items. Here I've poured a little olive, fresh olive oil, cold pressed fresh organic olive oil. Here I have a little, uh, what's called tamari, or shoyu, and this is a wheat-free soy sauce based on soybeans. And what I wanna show you about these things, if you are still having fats and salts in your diet, you haven't done a different kind of diet, some people are, have no additions that they add to the fresh fruit and vegetables. But if you still are, I'd like to show you that there's one more um, in my kitchen. I didn't have a spray bottle to show you with this one. This is Liquid Amino Acids by Bragg's. Wonderfully salty, also made from soybeans, and it's fermented, as is the soy sauce. When you use a spray bottle to add this to your nuts and seeds, you spray it on like so by spraying it in a mist. Does it give it enough flavor? It gives it lots of flavor, it's full of flavor. You can do the same thing by having another kind of spray bottle aside, and you can add your oil to it. And then it's a matter of just adding enough oil to simply give a slight mist to the nuts or seeds, or anything else that you're using oil for. The truth is, it takes the liver an hour to process one drop of oil. This oil is squeezed from many, many olives. So for our purposes, oil is the thing that pulls out the flavor in foods. So if you put oil as a spray on a salad or nuts and seeds, in the spray it is diffused. You can even add a little water to your oil. Shake it real well so it diffuses. Um, you can even dilute any of the sauces that you might find at the store. Give a quick spray. And you could even toast this. Some people toast their nuts and seeds. For those who are eating them raw, you could even put them on a dehydrating sheet and make them a little crispy, or you could even put them in a dry pan before you do any spraying and let them warm up and get toasty, not cooked, but just a slight warmth to them, and then add either your salt or your oil, whichever one you prefer or both, to make this very flavorful. I brought these wonderful chili peppers to show you that if you take your chili pepper and you were to slice it into pieces, it's very hot, um, beautiful, aren't they? If you were to slice these and put them on a dehydrating sheet, for example, you could, you could dry these out. You can also um, bake them. And when you put them through a grinder, you can make a chili pepper salt, um, salt or uh, they're all ground up as a powder. And when you have that powder, then you can add it to nuts and seeds. And even the wonderful jicama, J-I-M-A-C-A plant, 
that people in other parts of the world are familiar with. You can slice up your jicama and also do the same thing with a spray of light oil and some chili pepper or paprika. You can sprinkle any of it with that. So now you have something tasty at night that's crunchy, has a little bit of fat in it. Now the fat of the nuts and seeds is really plenty, but some people like to add a little bit. So I thought I'd go into the diffusing of your oils and your salts. We are so full of sodium and extra fat in this culture that it is really not necessary to keep adding that to the metabolism in the, in the body. The body is already processing years of uh, utilizing those things from an American diet. So I am glad you came out today. I hope you've learned some of the wonderful ways that one can prepare a simple dish, very simply, that uh, satisfies your taste buds and your sweet tooth and your salt and fat tooth, <laughs> the craving for those things. So thank you so much for coming out. I look forward to seeing you next week. And I just want to say that we have an ongoing workshop where I will be going into many of these things and I'm writing an ebook that describes each one of these kinds of uh, presentations in the ebook so one can move oneself along in the healing process by adding fresh fruits and vegetables to your diet. Have a wonderful day and thank you so much for coming out.